So what is the difference between heat capacity, specific heat capacity, and molar heat capacity? Heat capacity, which is typically represented by the symbol C, I'm going to put a subscript of H to represent its heat capacity. It's equal to the heat absorbed divided by the change in temperature. And so it has the units joules per Celsius. It could be joules per Kelvin or kilojoules per Celsius. But that's the unit for heat capacity. And it is an extensive property. It's a property that depends on the amount of material. So if you increase the mass of the substance, the heat capacity will increase. So for instance, 200 grams of aluminum can hold more thermal energy per Celsius or per change in Celsius compared to 100 grams of aluminum. So if you double the substance, you can hold twice as much energy per degree Celsius change. Now the specific heat capacity is the heat absorbed divided by the mass times the change in temperature. And so the units for specific heat capacity are joules per gram per Celsius. The specific heat capacity is an intensive property. It does not depend on the mass. If you increase the mass of the substance, the specific heat capacity will not change. So the specific heat capacity is the same if you have 200 grams of aluminum or 100 grams of aluminum. It depends on the identity of the substance. So the specific heat capacity will be different for water as opposed to aluminum. If the identity of the substance changes, the specific heat capacity will change. But the heat capacity not only changes based on the identity of the substance, but it also changes based on how much of the substance you have. The molar heat capacity, like the specific heat capacity, is also an intensive property. It only depends on the identity of the substance. And it's equal to the heat absorbed divided by the moles times the change in temperature. So the units are joules per mole per Celsius or per Kelvin. So what exactly is specific heat capacity? Well, I'm going to use water to illustrate it. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius. So that means that it takes 4.184 joules to heat up one gram of water just by one degree Celsius. Now, in the case of iron metal, the specific heat capacity is 0.45 joules per gram per Celsius. So it takes 0.45 joules of heat energy to heat one gram of iron metal by one degree Celsius. So if we apply the same amount of heat energy to water and to iron, let's assume they have the same mass. The temperature change of water will be small, but the temperature change of iron metal will be relatively large. And the reason for this is because water has a high specific heat capacity, but iron metal has a small specific heat capacity. So water can absorb a lot of energy without changing the temperature significantly. If you apply heat to iron metal, it's going to take a very short time to heat it up. The temperature change will increase greatly. To illustrate this, imagine if you place an iron pot on a stove or a metal pot and there's no water inside the temperature of that metal will increase greatly once you put it on the stove. The heat will be transferred throughout that metal efficiently. And so metals, they're very good conductors of heat. It doesn't take much energy to increase the temperature of a metal. Now, if you place water in that pot, it's going to take time for the temperature to go up because water can hold a lot of heat energy. And so water is very useful for storing thermal energy. Whereas metals, they're useful for transferring a thermal energy. So substances with a high heat capacity, or specific heat capacity, can store a lot of heat energy. Substances with a low heat capacity, they don't really store much heat energy. Let's try this problem. 
A thousand joules of heat energy is applied to 10 grams of iron metal and to 10 grams of water separately. Calculate the temperature change of each substance. So as the heat capacity increases, the temperature change should decrease. So substances with a very high heat capacity, as we said, will have a very low temperature change. So water has a very high specific heat capacity. So therefore, it should experience the lowest temperature change. And let's go ahead and calculate each one. So let's start with iron metal. We need to use this equation. Q is equal to mc delta T, or Q equals m cap. So the heat energy applied is 1,000 joules. And it's positive 1,000 because heat energy is being absorbed by these materials. So we're going to start with iron metal. The mass is 10 grams. The specific heat capacity is 0.45 joules per gram per Celsius. And the temperature change is what we're looking for. So let's multiply 10 by 0.45. So that's going to be 4.5. The unit grams cancel, and right now we have joules times Celsius. So now we're going to divide both sides by 4.5. So 1,000 divided by 4.5 will give us a temperature change of 222.2 degrees Celsius. So that's the temperature change of iron metal if you add a thousand joules of heat to it. As you can see, it changes a lot. Now what about water? So we're going to use the same equation and let's see what answer we're going to get. So Q is still a thousand. The mass is 10. The specific heat capacity is 4.184 and let's calculate delta C. So 10 times 4.184 is 41.84 and so a thousand divided by 41.84 is 23.9. So if we add a thousand joules to 10 grams of each substance the temperature of water only changes by 23.9 degrees whereas the temperature change of iron is 222 degrees, almost 10 times as much, somewhere between 9 and 10. But as you can see, adding a small amount of heat energy to iron metal changes the temperature drastically. But adding the same amount of heat energy to water doesn't change the temperature as much. So water can hold a lot of thermal energy. So as the specific heat capacity increases, the change in temperature uh, decreases. Number two, 1,068 joules of heat energy was applied to 50 grams of aluminum metal. The temperature changed from 21 Celsius to 45 Celsius. What is the heat capacity of this metal? To calculate the heat capacity, as was mentioned before, it's simply equal to the heat absorbed divided by the temperature change. So 1,068 joules of heat was absorbed. And the temperature change, that's final minus initial, it's 45 minus 45 Celsius minus 21 Celsius. So it's 1,068 joules divided by a temperature change of 24 degrees Celsius. So the heat capacity is 44.5 joules per degree Celsius. So for 50 grams of aluminum, it takes 44.5 joules just to raise the temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Now let's move on to part B. Calculate the specific heat capacity of this metal. So we can use this equation, Q is equal to mc delta T. And if you rearrange it, the specific heat capacity is Q divided by m delta T. 
So the heat energy is still 1,068 joules. The mass is 50 grams. And the temperature change, 45 minus 21, is 24 degrees Celsius. So 1,068 divided by 24, that's still 44.5. But then divide that by 50. And so you're going to get a specific heat capacity of 0.89 joules per gram per Celsius. Now, what about the molar heat capacity? What do we need to do in order to calculate that? Here's the equation that you need. Q is equal to Cn times delta T. So the molar heat capacity is Q divided by N times delta T. So what we need to do now is we need to calculate N. So let's convert 50 grams of aluminum to moles. The molar mass of aluminum is 26.98. So it's 50 divided by 26.98. And so that's equal to 1.853 moles. So now we can calculate the molar heat capacity. So it's Q, which is 1,068 joules divided by N, which is 1.853 moles, times the change in temperature, which is 24 degrees Celsius. So 1,068 divided by 24, and then divide that by 1.853. So the molar heat capacity is 24.02 joules per mole per Celsius.